Hi, I'm Carolyn Jardina. And I'm George Gerba. And we're here at the 2013 International CES. George, for you, what was the big topic of the week? 4K was certainly the big news uh, from both major and minor producers. We saw lots of 4K screens. We did, and then we also saw continuing work in smartphones, tablets, and a lot of other product categories. But in 4K, uh, we saw 56-inch 4K OLED sets from both Sony and Panasonic, mm -hmm. and we saw a variety of size uh, 4K TVs from uh, Samsung, LG, and other manufacturers. Uh, the big question, though, everybody's asking is where the content is going to come from. And uh, Sony is starting to try to answer that question by showing a prototype of a media player, which we'll be seeing more of uh, probably in the summer. And uh, they're looking at that as a first way of distributing 4K content into the home. Um, another conversation that was taking place in that area involved uh, Blu-ray and the possibility of other packaged media as a way to deliver 4K to avoid bandwidth constraints. And we saw cameras too, right? We did. We saw a lot of cameras. Um, Sony obviously uh, was talking about uh, their line. We have on the professional side the F65 and the F55 and the F5 are both going to be coming. And they also had a prototype of a 4K consumer camera. So interesting in this space is that as, as 4K cameras develop, the issue of screen size is coming, becoming very important too. Screen sizes generally have been growing. But a whole new set of technologies are out there on the horizon that's going to cause that to happen at a new level once again, allowing for even larger screens for uh, consumers. We'll see um, Willow Glass from Corning develop into flexible screens that can be done at really large scales, not that $65 a square inch size that everybody's aiming at right now, but much less money than that. That means that there's going to be an ongoing demand in the future for high quality and high resolution footage. So uh, as these cameras develop, we'll probably see uh, logical decisions about protecting content by making sure it's at a high enough resolution to sell into the future. We also saw a number of displays that had upscaling technology. That's true, from Samsung, uh, mm -hmm. Sony, Toshiba, and Sharp. We saw a new uh, technology that allowed for really nice upscaling from 2K to 4K. And then we also saw from Panasonic a 20-inch tablet. Yeah, that's interesting too because that goes right into workflows. So imagine uh, architects, animators um, drawing on screens that look like paper and that are at resolutions that respond like paper. We also saw second screen activities going on and Technicolor showed a, a really interesting uh, product called Magic Ruby that allowed for second screen um, uses both as a service, uh, as a tie to cur current tools that you already have in your um, re repertoire, and we saw a really nice uh, version of Magic Ruby that allowed for technical directors to do insertions into live feeds on second screens um, as the event's occurring. So we're going to see lots of things happening in that space and more providers, I'm sure, next time around. And 3D is continuing to be a topic here. Uh, a lot of the sets that were introduced this week are 3D capable, and we also saw a number of companies showing glasses-free technology. Yeah, we saw um, Stream TV Network showing a really nice, um, well, I don't want to say nice, but a really reasonable uh, 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 glassesless um, uh, screen that allowed for the fall off of the sweet spots gently, and you, it was really quite viewable from a couch. And then we also saw the uh, Dolby 3D mm -hmm. technology is really also nice. continuing to be uh, demonstrated here. Yeah, and then, um, of course, there's activity going on in the phone world. Sony showed their Xperia phone, which is now waterproof. So you can actually dunk it in the water safely. That's kind of nice. And then Hire actually showed a, what is almost a small tablet at six and a half inches, currently the world's largest phone. <laughs> And you were also on the hunt for the unexpected. What was your top pick? <laughs> oh, okay, so my top pick, uh, being a, a space agency or NASA fan, was a fuel cell from a company called uh, Lilliputian Systems. Um, and their product, Nectar Fuel Cell, will, will be available at Brookstone um, very soon. Um, it's about twice the size of an iPhone, and with a cartridge that you can take onto an airplane, it'll allow you to recharge an iPhone 14 times. So imagine that you had three of those little cylinders with you and you're off on a six-week production, you'd be fine. You wouldn't need a transformer. Kind of neat and uh, fun to be using technology like that. So George, would you describe this year's show as evolutionary or revolutionary? I think I'd more say it's the beginning of a conversation about 4K and that's going to continue over the next few years. And throughout the year, you can get more coverage at ET-centric.
From the Consumer Electronics Show, I'm Carolyn Giardina. And I'm George Grover.